everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I'm just going to be going over uh, 10 things that I wish I knew as a beginner fly fisherman. Now, I wouldn't really classify myself as a beginner anymore. Um, I've been doing this now for over 20 years, but I would say that I was a beginner and I made a lot of beginner mistakes uh, for at least the first 10 years. Uh, you know, you can take that for what it is. Fly fishing is a longevity sport. Uh, you're not going to get it overnight. However, the first thing that I want to talk about is the misconception that you need an expensive rod. Now, I don't want you to take this as you can buy any cheap rod. I don't recommend going to like Walmart or big five there comes a point right there is a price point there is uh, some certain features that you want such as good customer service maybe a little bit of a warranty uh, even if you do have to pay for those repairs uh, you want to uh, buy a rod that's gonna last a long time. Remember, I said this is a longevity thing. Just went with something cheap, like a like a Reddington, right? Like the Reddington um, Classic Trouts. You see me fish with that rod on my channel all the time. It's a good rod. Uh, the customer service, it's $40 for a repair. Uh, it's usually pretty quick. And um, yeah, I still have that rod to this day. So going on, you know, close to 15 years probably with that rod. The second thing I wanna talk about is a reel. Now the reels are kind of, the opposite thinking of a rod. Now, uh, you want a good reel, um, but remember you're fly fishing, right? You're, um, you're most likely not gonna be getting spooled out. You don't need that, you know, those big fancy drag systems when you're first starting out. I recommend something that is, uh, you know, it's durable. Uh, it's got really good reviews. I personally fish like Waterworks Lampson. Those are those are my go-to reels as far as that goes. And that's mainly because I can buy multiple spools and, and, you know, the same housing and things and swap those in and out. Truthfully, I fish like the Cabela's White River reels. I fish those for a really long time up until the point to where I started fishing like multiple times a week a hundred times or so a year the drag system and things would just burn out on them and they would just go bad and I'd, I'd pull, go to pull my line out and it would just keep spinning nothing as far as like structure rigid structure ever breaking on them I you know put those things through hell it was just the internals they just couldn't handle you know all that different fishing so once I had to start getting two or three of them a year it made sense to upgrade it get something uh, that you know, I would be using for ever basically. Now, on to the third thing. The third thing has to do with waders. Now, I'm very stubborn and very hard headed, and right, you see all the pictures, you see all the videos of uh, everybody, you know, that's wearing waders. Now, when I first started fly fishing, there wasn't YouTube, there was barely even any, any internet and things out there. Uh, but all the magazines that I read, Fly Fishing Magazine, and all those different things that I saw, or people that I saw on the river, uh, whenever we were traveling and stuff, they were all wearing waders. And so I thought I had to have a pair of waders. I'd be 105 degrees out, and I'm out there in my waders drenching sweat thinking that I'm doing the right thing but you know truthfully waders are only needed in the cold parts of the year I don't I don't wade most of the time uh, you know if I if I can avoid it I don't like to get in the water um, but I do like to have the ability to get down close to the water to release a fish or to uh, bring a fish in safely. Um, another thing with the waders is uh, if I can and it's really hot, like today it's gonna be like mid 80s and stuff, I'll wet wade. I have no problem with getting my boots wet or I might even just wear my wading boots with some wool socks or some gravel guards or something like that. So that is something to consider. When it does come down to waders, if you're not going to be using your waders 20 times a year, you can get away with buying some of the cheaper waders. Uh, I wore field and stream waders for a really long time. I actually wore them all through Alaska. I wore some field and stream waders uh, for about two weeks one time every day and you know multiple hours a day. They did wear out in about those two weeks but uh, that tells you what you could pretty much get out of a set of waders like that. 100 bucks right? Uh, if you can get by with those for two or three seasons then you're not going to get the longevity out of them uh, that you would or you're not going to get the benefit i should say that you would with going so with like um some sims or, or patagonia waders or things like that that are upwards of uh, you know five six seven hundred dollars uh, i do wear sims now but that's because i'm on the water so much and my last pair of sims that i have uh i'm on my third season with them and uh, they're just starting to get some holes but that's partially my fault because i took a tumble down some rocks and uh, i was carrying my knife and things in my pocket and uh just that you know that friction there rubbed up against it so hey i'll be doing a how to patch your waders video coming up now let's get on to the fourth thing right the fourth thing 
was that a net is not needed. Now, I grew up, my dad didn't fly fish. He was a conventional uh, fisherman, right? Uh, spinning reel. And, you know, we never had a net. Uh, usually you're fishing with something. You can muscle the fish in. You can pull them up on shore. A lot of times we were actually almost every single time. I can't remember growing up that when we caught a fish and it was big enough that we didn't eat it, right? That was, that was the reason that we were fishing was for, uh, you know, for dinner or whatever that was. So the majority of the time I didn't fish with a net. Now, unless I was like on a canal or I was on a boat or something, right? To where you need a net to bring the fish up on the, on the boat or, you know, up on shore or something uh, then that was different but when I was just out on the river or just uh, fishing on the shore of a lake or something I didn't have a net now that was a major misconception on my part because I lost a lot of fish where I could have if I would have had a net I could have brought them in also I spent a long time mishandling fish right um, I drag them through the dirt take some pictures with them uh, I didn't know any better but we all got to get better we make those mistakes we learn from them now you don't necessarily need a net like this one here uh, you know this is carbon fiber it floats and all that other stuff uh, but I spent like a hundred dollars on this net you don't need a net like that uh, you can get a cheap wooden net you can find those on Amazon ventures fly company makes a really good one uh, you can check out their link down below uh, but they make one right around 20 25 bucks now when we're talking about net you want a good deep net you can see that right like there's a good deep net um, I can scoop the fish up and I can really get them in there not only that I can pull the net up and I can still keep the fish in the water. Now they do come out of the water sometimes. Uh, we're not all perfect, but you can do that. Also, you wanna make sure that the holes in the net um, are the right size. My buddy, Sean, you might see in a couple of my videos, right? He'll go to, you know, net, net a fish or uh, he's netted my fish a couple times and it just goes right out, right? Maybe that's my fault for not catching bigger fish, but get something probably the diameter, no, no bigger than the diameter of your thumb. Right, that's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> Play on words, right? The fifth thing that I didn't understand were leaders, right? Uh, I would just buy a leader, I would just throw those on there. Whenever we're talking about leader, uh, 4X is smaller than let's say 3X. Also, I recommend about nine feet. That's a big deal right there. Uh, nine feet um, gets you out there, it turns over your fly better. Uh, it doesn't spook the fish as much. And whenever your leader starts to get a little short, I would say once it gets shorter than the length of your rod, it's about time to, you know, put a new leader on. Now there's no shame in using a tapered leader. I still buy these three packs and I carry them with me whenever I'm in a situation. I don't feel like tying on a new tippet, um, you know, or I need a new butt section to attach to my float line. I will use, I'll just throw on a brand new tapered leader. 5X is my preferred go-to. Yours might be a little bit different depending on the fish that you're targeting. Uh, 6X is good whenever you're fishing for, you know, shy fish or 7X and things like that. But if it's windy or uh, you get a knot in it, it's, it's done, right? Use those tapered leaders. Uh, eventually you do want to figure out how to tie your own leader, tie your tippet on there, uh, because that gives you a lot more options when you're out uh, fishing somewhere and uh, it actually saves you quite a bit of money. You can see here, this was a three pack, right? Rio, $13.99. Again, if you do wanna save some money, uh, Ventures Fly Company, I got that upside down, but Ventures Fly Company makes some very good quality leaders as well. And uh, those are a lot cheaper than the rest. All right, what are we on? Number six, right? So number six, this is something that, uh, you know, I had a misconception of, of if I was gonna learn to fly fish, right, then I had to be fly fishing every single time. And that's not the case. I still pick up a spinning rod. I still go fish in the ocean with uh, deep sea reels. Um, I fish off of boats. I fish off of piers. I do all that different stuff. You don't have to solely fish you know with a fly rod fly fishing is fun and you might want to do that and that is fine but you don't necessarily have to drop all that other you know all those other fishing options right like there's a ton of options out there now this is going to make some of the purists mad but you know truthfully a lot of the purists aren't really around anymore and uh if if the purists had their way the sport wouldn't be growing like it is. You want people out there fishing and uh, it doesn't matter how you're doing it. So if you wanna fly fish one weekend, you wanna 
you know, not fly fish the next weekend, that is totally fine. Um, if you can't make it out to the water, I do recommend every once in a while picking up that fly rod, going out to the park, maybe your front yard or a nice grassy area. Uh, just throw on a piece of yarn onto you, just tie that onto your leader and uh, get out there and practice. Cause you do lose a little bit of that feel um, but the good thing is whenever you're setting the hook on pretty much any fishing pole, uh, a lot of that feel feels the same. So as long as you're fishing, you're not gonna lose that, but you might lose your casting abilities. Number, what are we on, seven I think? Sticking with the casting, right? Another misconception I had was that you had to be a perfect caster. Is caster a word? Yeah, right? That makes sense. You had to be a perfect caster. You had to be casting 100, 150 feet out there, right? I used to watch, uh, you know, these competitions and see these people out there where they're seeing who could cast the, the, the farthest with the fly rod. And the majority of the fish that I catch are probably, you know, 30 or 40 feet away. And that's far. A lot of times I'm catching, I might catch them 20 feet away, 15 feet away. Um, and truthfully, a lot of times, I mean, look behind me. I'm not going to be... Uh, you know, making these big dramatic casts like you see out in Montana or Wyoming or, uh, you know, those big rivers and things in like South America or New Zealand, right? That's just, uh, that's just not the way that it is. So uh, most of my casts, I'm just going to be, you know, just letting the water load my, load my uh, rod and then I'm just going to be slinging that back out there. And, you know, sometimes you make a bad cast and the majority of the time you make a bad cast, you can just leave it out there. The current will, uh, you know, uh, straighten that line up for you and you might catch a fish on the backswing, right? If you're messing up a lot, I don't recommend, you know, constantly false casting and pulling it out. You don't like where it's at. You're going to throw it back in there. Uh, that's a good way to spook the fish and that's a good way to not catch any fish. All right, what are we on? Number eight? I think we're on number eight. Uh, so this other misconception, uh, I went with this for a long time, is that you had to have friends that fly fish. No, you don't necessarily have to have friends that fly fish. You can go do this on your own. You can do this while they are fishing other ways. Um, you know, maybe you want to go out and bring a fly rod along just to just to carry with you and you're out there fishing. Uh, maybe you're, you know, you've got your spinning rod out there and you're catching some fish. Uh, you find out where the fish are on your spinning rod and then maybe you want to pick the fly rod up and see if you can pick a fish up out of that same hole. Uh, those are, you know, nice little convenient ways. B uh, build your confidence up um, and, you know, maybe get your friends interested and then maybe they you know catch on with the fly fishing disease and uh, sink half their life savings into it you never know what you're gonna do but you do not have to have friends that fly fish uh, that also goes to say that you do not have to hire a guide or somebody to teach you to fly fish um, you don't have to have a friend that shows you how to fly fish or however you pick that up there's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show you what to do uh, you just have to get out there and do it now if you do have somebody in person that is going to show you how to fly fish you could probably cut your learning time in half um, what that means is you can probably be pretty f successful within your first year otherwise it's probably going to take you into your second year to really pick it up and learn what you're doing as a fly fisherman and then that leads us into number nine right that it's it's all about catching fish right if you go out there and you don't catch any fish then what's the point right that's that's the way a lot of us think that if i don't catch any fish that i am not successful and that is not the truth um you go out there i learn something new every single day if i'm not catching fish if i'm catching fish it doesn't matter right every time you cast your line every time you land it exactly where you want it uh, you learn something every time you get snagged in a tree or hung up on a rock you're going to learn something so it's not about catching fish um, i don't know how many times i've gone and i've driven you know countless hours to go out just for uh somebody to be skunked or or somebody not to catch anything and and do they regret the trip no right we're out there we're hanging out together we're learning things uh we're having a good time and uh it's not about catching fish now do i enjoy catching fish yes i enjoy catching fish very much um i have probably enjoy catching the smaller ones more than the big ones i don't know why i i really couldn't tell you but i really love catching like fish the size of my hand versus you know these big monsters and I, I, I don't know why. I'm going to have to figure that one out why I enjoy doing that. Now, that leads us into this last misconception that I had at number 10 with fly fishermen are grumpy. 
probably whenever I started, right, this was like early 90s, mid 90s when I started fly fishing. And there were some grumpy fly fishermen out there. Uh, they were the guys, it was dry or die, uh, dry fly only, right? If you're not dry fly fishing, then what are you out there for? Uh, anything else are considered bait or a lure to them. And uh, they would run you off the water in some of the spots if they caught you fishing in other place, you know, with, with other techniques. Now, that's not the case. I haven't ran into a grumpy fly fisherman in a really long time. And in fact, my first fish that I caught off a fly was off a fly, fisher, uh, fly fisherman that I met on the side of a river that was tying some flies. And he was like, hey kid, come over here. Let me show you something. Showed me, uh, you know, how to make a basic cast and gave me some flies out there. And, um, you know, it was, it was game on from then. And, and you know, that's how I caught my first fish on the fly. So very friendly people out there. Now, in fact, I would even say that, that conventional fishermen are more grumpy than fly fishermen. And that's because like, like if I walk up to a fly, a fly fisherman, uh, let's just say fly fisher person now, right? Like women fish, everybody's fishing. Um, anyway, right, you walk up to somebody that's fly fishing and uh, you get out there and if I ask them, hey, you, you successful? Oh yeah, I just, I just pulled two out up against that rock over there. Um, I'd be like, oh cool, what are you fishing with? They'll tell me exactly what they're fishing with, how long of a leader they're using, what weight rod they're using. And I think the reason is, is because the majority of fly fishermen aren't keeping fish. And uh, it's different whenever you're looking at, at fishing as an experience versus fishing as, um, you know, fishing for a product or a commodity. You're trying to take something from the river that then belongs to you. Uh, you know, if I'm trying to fish and keep the fish, then I don't want somebody else fishing and keep the fish because then that fish is gone. But whenever you're fly fishing and, uh, you know, you're doing catch and release, you're, you're, you're treating the fish uh, you know, handling them with care and all that other stuff. It doesn't matter if somebody else catches that fish because that fish is going to go right at, back out into the river for the next person to catch that fish. So uh, that's just the way that I think it is. But but speak, if you see somebody on the water, stop. I, I talk to everybody. My wife gets upset with me whenever we're out hiking and stuff and I see somebody with a fly rod and I'm like, hey, how's the, how's the fishing down here, right? She gets... You know, she gets mad that I'm that I'm talking to all these different people and who knows maybe it does annoy them uh, But I'm a friendly guy, right? I'm easy to talk to so uh, if you see me out there definitely ask me right throw things down in the comments I'll tell you exactly what I'm fishing with uh, You know if I'm out there on the trail, I'll show you where I caught them I'm not gonna release it out to the internet uh, You know for everybody and their brother to come down here and, and you know uh, Trash the place, but I'll, I'll tell you straight to your face. No problem. Um, all right, also that brings me to uh, memberships, right? Memberships, uh, everything's gonna be going out this month. I'm gonna be sending out those flies. I've got some new stickers, keychains, coasters, and things that I'm gonna be sending to you. Uh, and if you're not a member yet, consider becoming one, right? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. Most of the money that I get from my memberships goes straight back into those things that you're getting as members, right? I've sent out hats, I've sent out shirts, uh, I've sent out a lot of different things. Um, so maybe check that out. If it's for you, you know, consider becoming a member. It really helps out this channel. And as with everything else, if this was helpful, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe. All right, everyone, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.